Thanks. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, good to see you all. Good to see you. My name's James. I'm from Kettering, which is a small town next to the Weetabix factory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should whoop. It's a very popular dish. It's, uh... And all of you who eat it, you'll eat it in different ways. Some of you might cover it in yogurt and honey. Other people, strawberries and cream or sugar and raisins. Basically, just get Weetabix and cover it in anything that tastes better than Weetabix. That's, <laughs> that's the rule. Some people get annoyed when I do that bit because uh, I don't list how they have their Weetabix <laughs> in the morning. You laugh. In Wolverhampton, it kicked off. So... Uh... Oh, you're a cool guy. Got a hat on. I bet, I bet you've got a good phone as well. Have you got a good phone? It's all right, yeah. Well, let's, let's just get a look. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Hey! <laughs> Unlucky sucker. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book. <laughs> no, actually, I'll compare it to mine. Actually, while we're here, um, I'll, I'll, I'll see uh, who's cooler, me or, me or the hats. Um, hold on. Basically, you've already seen this fella, this contender. Remember him? Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I know this looks so wrong. Is this, is, I could just do the whole gig like that, am I? <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yeah. Of course I've won. If you can't see that at the back, it's the phone you used to have. <laughs> You know, uh, this is actually uh, not as good as it looks, as well, because uh, about six months ago, I threw it across a road. Uh, not on purpose. I've got, you know, very, I gesticulate a lot when I talk. I've got bad grip and uh, making a passionate point outside a pub. And then I didn't have my phone anymore. So now it's got no buttons in it. There's no, no buttons in that phone anymore. So for the last six months, because I'm, I'm skinned, this is how I've been living my life. That's... Right. I know that looks lame, but from a distance, it appears as though I've got a Blackberry. <laughs> I've got ladies approach me from across bars with this, they see me from across the rooms going, oh, he looks quite... Oh, no, he's just poking an old Nokia with a bio. <laughs> Get your numbers? Might take a while. <laughs> Uh, I actually, I'll, I'll leave things to the last minute to get, to get new ones anyway. They always break, and then I'll get a new one. Basically, oh, you probably want your phone back, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's thinking then, he's actually nicked it. <laughs> It'd be great if I just had loads of good phones. Uh, oh! <laughs> uh, I'll, tell you, I'll start with a fun fact. I'll tell you a fun fact. I learned the other day that if you have Botox, right, on the night that you've had Botox, you fall asleep on the side of your face. You'll wake up the next morning and your eyebrow will have slid from here around to here. <laughs> Tremendous. I figured out if you sleep evenly on both sides of your face, you'll wake up the next morning and look like your eyes are in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I think. Uh, I, uh, I'm pretty gullible. I don't, uh, when, when I was nine, uh, my dad took me to London for the day and spent the whole day just lying to me for his own amusement to see what I would believe. And the what main one he got me with were on the escalators, going past all the different signs for all the different West End shows that are on on the underground. And he told me that the people who put up those posters uh, have one of the hardest jobs in the world. <laughs> I leave that into my teens. Oh. <laughs> images of them walking backwards on the spot. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> my impression of a man on an escalator. <laughs> Pretty good impression. You guys didn't get to see it. <laughs> Pretty sweet. I do that impression. My other impression I've got, I can do an impression of uh, someone from Roman times reading a text message. It's quite a niche impression. <laughs> you have no way of checking if it's true, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll do it for you now. I've got the phone now, I'll do it with this. Uh, I won't use the biro because they weren't invented in Roman times. <laughs> this, is, so this, is, this is someone from Roman times. They're reading a text message. 20? Oh no, those are kisses.
So, uh, the best day out I ever had, I'll tell you this, I went to Woburn Safari Park. Uh, but, yeah, fans of Woburn Inch, so there should be. It's an awesome place. I went with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, it was brilliant. Before we even got into the park, park, it was amazing. We were driving up to the gate, and there was a sign on the gate. And the sign said, there will be no lions in the park today due to strong winds. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think reading that sign may have been better than actually seeing a lion. Like, <laughs> some of the things it makes you imagine straight away is like, is, is a lion really that flimsy? <laughs> is the king of the jungle that vulnerable to drafts? Because if he is, leave them out. I will pay double for that show. <laughs> Figured out, right, if Woburn Safari Park want to save a lot of money, all they've got to do is get rid of all their animals and just replace them with vague notices explaining why the animals are no longer there. <laughs> to fuel our imaginations with them. There will be no cheetahs in the park today, due to slippery grass. <laughs> there will be no zebras in the park today, due to zebra Christmas. <laughs> there will be no chameleons in the park today, or will there? <laughs> Me and that girl, we, we split up after that. It's not a sad story, we just weren't right for each other. Like, for example, I used to have a, a T-shirt <laughs> More t-shirts. Well, I, uh, I used to have a t-shirt. A drawing of a haunted house on it. And in all the little windows, there were ghosts. But you couldn't see the ghosts if the lights were on. Because the ghosts would glow in the dark. <laughs> right, she didn't think that was cool. <laughs> no, I know I'm not cool. I was in the Scouts till I was 15. That is as old as you're allowed to be in the Scouts before they ask you to leave. Like, that's... <laughs> It's fine, I never got bullied at school or anything like that. Although I was chatting to my dad about school recently and he was there going, well, you know, James, school's tough for anyone. <laughs> Don't need to tell you, you got bullied. I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Look, I've never been bullied at school. He just went, didn't you? <laughs> I just always assumed you did. <laughs> like, assumed? That means he'd watch me leave for school every morning with my trousers two sizes too small for me and my Thomas the Tank Engine lunchbox. <laughs> I'd just be like, well, I'd bully him. <laughs> Sending our child to the slaughter, Diane, and then he punched him in the face myself. <laughs> Once, my friend Emma went into school and another kid hit her in the face with a sock full of acorns. <laughs> right, thanks for laughing, because... <laughs> when I laughed, she got so offended. <laughs> she thought I was laughing at the fact that she got hurt, which I wasn't. What I was laughing at in that sentence was a sock full of acorns. That, that was going to make me laugh. She said, I went to school today, a kid hit me in the face with a brick. <laughs> you laugh now because of the brilliant build-up. Normally, people getting hit in the face with bricks is never funny. <laughs> Unless it's in the film Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. When it's hilarious. It's classic. But uh, she wanted to stop me from laughing, right? It's the worst way she could have tried to stop me laughing ever. I was there, I was on the floor, properly loving it. And she just went, don't laugh. <laughs> it was full, right up to the heel. <laughs> Worst I've ever got, I got poked in the eye once. Uh, you know, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I poked I this wasn't even in school, it was like a couple of years ago. And I had to go to Moorfields Eye Hospital. And on the way there, in the cab, I was in denial about how bad the eye was. So I was trying to do a crossword the whole way there, like the whole thing. And every time the cabbie would look at me in the rearview mirror, I'd chew the pen to make out like I was struggling with the clues that had nothing to do with the fact my eye was bleeding. And then, <laughs> dropped me off at Moorfield. As I was walking up to the door, everyone was recoiling from my hideous face, just trying to get out of my way. It's like, right, let me go to the toilets, assess the damage, see how bad this is. Now, it's pretty bad. But what really stood out was that I had a river of ink running all the way down my chin. <laughs> I've been chewing the pen. In the... Everyone must have been looking at me going, oh, God, he can't take care of himself at all. <laughs> Sitting at home, breaking off pens in his mouth and jabbing them in his eye. <laughs> care what you deserve. <laughs> Sitting there in the waiting room next to a lady, she asked me how I'd hurt my eye. Now, at the time, it's before I did stand up, I used to work in a school with autistic children. And one of them kicked off that day when I tried to get involved, the way he responded was uh, he got his finger and he um, ploughed it <laughs> into my eye, 
bit of a crunch. <laughs> and uh, when it was in there, quickly, just... <laughs> didn't do any of this. What he did was, formed a hook. Then, oh. uh, on the return journey, <laughs> grabbed his very long fingernail <laughs> over my eyeball, scratching the surface. And when I told her this, she went, Oh, you work with autistic children? That must be so rewarding. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> About a week after me and the Woburn girl split up, I went to a house party. Now, house parties are the worst places to be if you've just split up with someone. You're surrounded by two types of people at a house party. You've got couples and people trying to form new couples. There's no one in between. I overheard one bloke, quite drunk, Lean into a girl and say, at the end of the day, I can be anything from a horny twat to a knobhead. <laughs> now that is quite the range to give yourself. <laughs> Essentially saying, oh, I'll always wind you up, but sometimes I'll do it with a boner. <laughs> Even that didn't cheer me up. <laughs> to go upstairs to the toilet, not because I wanted to go to the toilet, just wanted to get away from everyone really. And as I was walking towards the door, it was flung open. And this guy was just standing there, just looking at me. Quite drunk. And eventually, he broke the silence. He went, Mate, I love that t shirt. <laughs> I looked down and I'm wearing the Haunted House t shirt. Now, my self esteem's been at rock bottom for a whole week, right? Now, with one compliment from a stranger, it's like, bing, back in the room. But then I realise I'm in a very well lit corridor at the moment. <laughs> right now, I'm getting a compliment on a drawing of a haunted house. <laughs> so far, I could double my money here. <laughs> I lent in, I never looked so seriously at another human being in my whole life. I just went, you do realize <laughs> this glows in the dark. <laughs> he could not pull me inside that bathroom fast enough. <laughs> Straight in, door shut, and my T-shirt started doing its thing when we turned the lights off, and he was going to contain himself. He was so excited, the whole thing, he's just there going, oh, mate, that is awesome. I was like, yes, she never appreciated this. <laughs> so there's one coming out the chimney. I was like, that's the chimney ghost. <laughs> my favourite ghost. <laughs> it was then that I realised there are three types of people at a house party and not two. There are couples... There are people trying to form new couples, and there are newly single men standing in a darkened bathroom showing their glowing ghosts to another dude. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you guys have been an absolute, absolute pleasure to talk to. I uh, hope to see you again soon. I'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>